Hey, Fabio. Oh, hey, boss. How are you doing? What are you reading? I'm learning about Dravet syndrome. Wouldn't it be interesting if we could learn about that from Dr. Dravet herself? That would be awesome. Do you want to know how uh, I uh, discovered this uh, epilepsy drabo syndrome? Yeah. Yes. I want to know everything. So, as you can see on the screen, it is a long history. Yeah. Huh? yeah okay. Tell us the story. So, so okay. there was in Marseille a small center directed by Professor Gaston mm -hmm. for the study of uh, epilepsy in children. Mm -hmm. So there are many children who live uh, with uh, educators in this center, and there was a laboratory of EEG. There are there were also um, neuroimaging, but at this time imaging was very very uh, poor, uh -huh. and uh, because epilepsy in children was not very well known in this in this uh, period. Mm -hmm. So the children uh, went to the center for to have a diagnosis and also a treatment, mm -hmm. and they lived in the center uh, under the direction of educators in small groups. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there was also the university with a school of uh, medicine and pediatrics, particularly, and there was a young uh, student uh, who was was looking for a topic for her, her thesis, doctor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was this student, mm -hmm. and uh, I met I met with a collaborator of Professor Gaston, and they proposed to me to um, come in their center to study uh, the children. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this time, Professor Gaston was very interested in the work by uh, Professor Lennox in the United States. Mm -hmm. And so it, he asked me for uh, working on this type of epilepsy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it is in this manner I studied the 50 children and uh, we established the, the criterion. And uh, finally, we, it was my thesis. And at this time, the name was Childhood Epileptic Encephalopathy with Diffuse Spike Waves, Gimal variant. You know that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, but later on, uh, the, this epilepsy was named uh, um, by the name of Professor Gaston. No, Lennox, Lennox, first Lennox syndrome. And after that, uh, Madame Lennox, Margaret Lennox, who was a daughter from William Lennox, mm -hmm. has asked for adding the name of Gaston. So oh. that was the Lennox Gaston syndrome. Okay. And after that, I was proposed to become a resident in the, this center. Mm -hmm. And uh, I lived uh, constantly in this uh, place. That was my house in garden. And there were numerous um, numerous uh, small small uh, houses we named them pavillon with a group of children and mm -hmm. there were also children who came with their mother and remain only some days in a special uh, part of the center mm -hmm. and uh, I worked permanently with these children mm -hmm. and I collaborated with all the other doctors. There were many doctors who came from other countries uh, to study under the uh, supervision of Professor Gaston. Mm -hmm. And uh, I visited the patient every day. I discussed with the educators, with the nurses, with the uh, infirmiers. Mm -hmm. And with the parents, when there were the parents, I uh, I talked very often with the parents, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also I participated in the in the recordings of EEG, D N night, mm -hmm. and uh, with my collaborator, we have a, a knowledge of different types of epilepsies, okay. and for example. Uh, with Tassinari, 
we have we have observed that uh, there were uh, patients who have this special type of uh, electroencephalograms with uh, continuous spike waves during sleep, as you can see here. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, we also see that uh, many children who were uh, sent to the center with uh, suspected diagnosis of Lennox gastro syndrome, in reality, they did, didn't have the symptoms, the signs of the his, and the history of the Lennox gastro syndrome. It, they were completely different uh, because they, ha they have the onset in the first year of life, uh, fever sensitivity, generalized clonic status epilepticus, which does not exist in uh, Lennox gastro syndrome, mm -hmm. myoclonic seizures, uh, and no etiology was known. Mm -hmm. Often they were photosensitive with self-stimulation, etc. Mm -hmm. I, uh, at this time, I worked with my colleague, um, Madame Michel Bureau, you can see on this picture, and with our Italian friend, uh, Bernardo Dalla Bernardina, who worked in Verona. Mm -hmm. And uh, also Bernardo have observed this type of uh, children in his uh, department. Mm -hmm. And we described, I was not alone, eh? We describe the epilepsy myoclonic grave du nourrisson in French in 1978, and it was published in a very small journal, medical journal mm -hmm. for general practitioners in France. Mm -hmm. But after that, we continued to work, and we have uh, presented a group of uh, children with this type of symptomatology in mm -hmm. the International Congress uh, in Kyoto in 1981. And we, ha we had at this time 40 children, 42 children in St. Paul. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, paper has been published in the Advances in Epilotology. Yeah. And uh, it was the first international uh, communication about this, uh, this type of uh, epilepsy. Mm -hmm. And in Japan, they were very interested because they have they had also described children with this type of symptomatology. Mm -hmm. And they had also observed there were borderline cases, mm -hmm. but many of their communications, the article were in Japan language. Mm -hmm. So it was difficult to diffuse this knowledge. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, it was a syndrome, the smile, mm -hmm. among other syndromes with intractable epilepsy, cognitive deficit, but often known probably genetic etiology, because we didn't find any other uh, reason for that. Mm -hmm. And we arrived to the second chapter in Australia. You mm -hmm. know Ingrid Schaeffer and uh, Samuel Berkovic, mm -hmm. and they analyzed very uh, large families with many types of epilepsies. And uh, these seizures were uh, provoked by uh, fever. And so they named that uh, the febrile epilepsy with febrile seizures plus. Mm -hmm. And they thought at this time all the types of epilepsies were generalized. So generalized epilepsy, just plus. Mm -hmm. And uh, is it, they had the hope that he, he could, they could find a, a mutation because uh, it was a genetic uh, syndrome. Mm -hmm. but, uh, not known. And effectively, sometime uh, after, this mutation on, of SN1A gene was discovered by uh, another uh, team. So mm -hmm. they were happy. Mm -hmm. And the third uh, chapter in Belgium. Because in Belgium, they had also this type of patients. And they observed that uh, in the syndrome severe myoclonic epilepsy of infancy, there was a role, important role of the change in temperature of fever. So they had the idea to search the, test, the same mutation in uh, these children. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, they discovered this mutation in all, in all the seven patients they have studied for that. It was confirmed, it was genetic, and... Uh, usually uh, related to this type of uh, SN1A mutation. But, 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 
not all the patients carried this type of mutation. Mm -hmm. So there were uh, many researches after that, an explosion of research, mm -hmm. because also the molecular genetics was progressing very quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, an animal model was uh, created, particularly in Seattle, but Dr. Mm -hmm. Petrol. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, why it was no more named severe myoclonic epilepsy in infancy? Mm -hmm. Because after the first description, there were many, uh, not, not many, but there were also patients who didn't have myoclonic seizure. The mm -hmm. same symptomatology except the myoclonic seizures. Mm -hmm. So it was not uh, reasonable to maintain the type, the name of the myoclonic. Mm -hmm. And with the uh, evolution, we observed also that this epilepsy didn't uh, disappear and continue at the adult age. And mm -hmm. so it was difficult to, to say for an adult patient it was an epilepsy of infancy, mm -hmm. and uh, but the commission, the, the commission for the nomenclature, didn't find a, a word a term to describe this epilepsy, so they decided to name that uh, uh, by my name. That mm -hmm. was in two thousand one.